what are we giving up uh, in not learning our history, teaching our history, and actually writing our history? And I wonder for, for uh, at, a, at a moment whether uh, history is not um, the history of the powerful, uh, or in our particular case in the region, uh, whether history isn't written behind closed doors. Um, and so there's, there's, there's that problem, because there are a lot of stories that you will hear when you speak to older people uh, in the region, and they'll say, ah, oh, but this is what happened at this point, that was why that happened. And I often think that if we could just, um, you know, do an oral history and actually collect all of this, we as um, at least my generation and then all of the generations that follow me, uh, will have a much better understanding of what it is that explains our existence. Uh, just to also give you an example, I've been working on a project for the last few weeks that requires me to delve into some of these historical questions. And I now think, had I known these were the drivers for unity, uh, growth, development, and all that, I would have done a much more interesting and better job as a diplomat. Um, so I, I, I commend you on making sure that history is, is, is taken seriously. Um, and I also think that it's, it's, it's very exciting to look at the difficult points in our history and try to understand what exactly took place. Because we have this tendency in the region to say, you know, everything was beautiful, willpower, desire, unity, and then we did it. But actually the real story is one of uh, negotiation, reading people's personalities, understanding small little you know, groupings, how they all interact with each other. Sometimes it's one individual who makes the difference positively, and sometimes it's that same individual who will make the difference negatively. Uh, so I think uh, that's absolutely fascinating. So wh why do you think that um, history isn't really being uh, taught in the, in the region, even outside of the diplomatic core, outside of uh, government, at universities, for example? I think it's a combination of factors, uh, quite honestly. I think um, I mentioned contemporary history, and I think contemporary history mm. um, is being largely overlooked. Um, and I oh. think it's because our curriculums were, were written at a time when people lived through those events. So that yeah. history needs to be taught uh, the way it should be taught uh, now. I mean, uh, our parents probably lived through um, these episodes in the 60s and the 70s um, mm -hmm. we certainly didn't um, so I, I think that that's a factor um, mm -hmm. I think it's also we tend to shy away and I think we've had this discussion before and and you mm -hmm. just mentioned um, that if it doesn't um, fit neatly and comfortably then we, we don't mm -hmm. want to touch it um, or we'll just sprinkle a little bit of it in the textbook and then we will not delve into it sometimes yeah. that counterproductive because I mean um, I remember attending a talk um, about Sheikh Zayed and his attempt to mm. unify the UAE and it wasn't an easy job um, yeah. um, I think it's it's a testament to his character when you show yeah. what he actually had to go through um, yeah. but to make it easy and simple it doesn't really show it doesn't give people historical figures are really important the credit that they deserve history yeah. is you know, a combination of uh, stories of uh, victors and uh, of uh, people and their flaws and it's 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 embedded with so many different intricacies that we really have to pay attention to